Hi, my name is Sophie. Today I'm going to be sharing some tips that you could use while creating homemade face masks. The pattern that I use will be in the description. It is from Craft Passion. Before we get into the tips, here are some things to consider. First, you should consider having a seam ripper nearby in case of any mistakes. Second, you should think about enjoying your time with some music playing in the background. Third, Plan on activating your patience level to the max because making face masks can get very frustrating. Finally, consider finding a good pair of fabric scissors that haven't been ruined by paper. Now moving on to the tips. The first tip is to add interfacing to the back side to give the mask a body and then to add an extra layer. For our masks, we have been using iron-on interfacing, whether it is stick-on or peel-off. The next tip has no use if you don't do the tip after it. It is to iron on the no seam to one side. We typically do it to the right side so that it's easier to sew. We do this on the curved edge of the ironing board. You would use this tip to make the next stitch easier. To go along with this tip, we suggest doing the top stitch on the no seam once it's ironed. You do this to give the mask some more strength down the middle. Before you pin the elastic onto the mask, you should cut diagonal slits like so on the seam allowance of the mask. This is optional, but it helps the mask curve better and more smoothly once it's finished. The next tip is for when you get to pinning the mask. For each size, we cut the elastic different lengths. For the large size or the man size mask, we cut the elastic at 5 and 3 fourths inches. For the medium size or the female size mask, we cut the elastic at 4 and a half inches. Next, for the small size mask or the 7 to 12 year old kid, we cut the elastic at 4 inches. And finally, for the extra small or the 3 to 6 year old kid mask, we have been cutting the elastic at 3 and a half inches. Make sure when you pin the elastic, you face the ball of the pin towards the middle of the mask so that the foot does not get caught on it. Finally, to go along with pinning, we advise that you leave a 3 inch hole on the bottom of the mask for flipping. You measure 1.5 inches on each side of the middle seam line and add a pin upright at that location. When you stitch the bottom of the mask, you start and stop your stitch where the pins are placed. So when you do this stitch, we suggest lining up your needle in the middle and then line up your foot with the edge of the fabric. We suggest you start at the bottom on the left side and line up the back of your foot with the pin. You should take the pin out and put your finger where the pin was. Reverse your stitch and continue to go all the way around the mask with your foot lined up with the fabric. The tip goes along with the second to last stitch. It is to triple stitch over the areas that have pinned elastic or ties. You do this for strength and to make sure the elastic or ties don't detach from the mask. You will have to do this four times since there are four places on the mask where the elastic or ties are pinned. After you've completed this stitch, you have to flip the mask right side out. But wait, if you cut the corners of the mask, your mask will have much better corners and will be easier to stitch close to the edge in the last stitch. But be careful not to accidentally cut the stitch because then you have to restitch that spot. Then you are good to flip the mask. Next, when you flip the mask, use a pencil or something else that is long enough to reach the corners and shove it in all four corners to get nice right angles. Next tip is to iron over the whole mask before you do the final stitch. You want to specifically iron the edges in the pocket because those are the parts you are sewing on for the last stitch. Ironing the edges will give the mask a crisp look and your mask will be easier to sew on. In the pocket, you want to get a nice fold without creases because you might miss the fabric when you sew all around the mask. Finally, I'm going to share with you the washing and drying cycle that we use when we put in lots of masks. First, we like to put the mask in lingerie bags. That's only if you have them. For the washing cycle, we wash them on warm for 30 minutes. And for the drying cycle, we dry on low for 30 minutes. So give yourself about an hour to wash and dry the mask if you're going to use this method. Of course, you can hand wash your mask with soap and water and let it air dry if you only have one or two masks that you need to clean. That will be all for this video, and I hope these tips are useful to you when making homemade face masks. The pattern that I use will be in the description if you are planning on making any or sharing the pattern with a friend. Thank you for watching and I hope this helps you make a better creation that you are comfortable going with in public.